Okay. Good morning. Yeah. You're okay. Yeah. You're outdoors. Yeah, I'm at I'm at a skate park. <laughs> you're at a skate park. Yeah. <laughs> you're not supposed to be out. You're supposed to be in your house. I'm getting some fresh air. <laughs> Mrs. Green, Master Hong. Yeah. Good yes. Morning. Good morning. Yeah. A little video on you, just so you know. No video. Uh, okay, here we go. There Boom. You. All right. Let me give you a few minutes. We'll get started. Good morning, ma'am. Well, hopefully at nice some shirt, point, we'll get some confirmation from the governor on what's going to happen with the stay at home order. I would imagine that it's going to be gradually lifted. Um, my initial thoughts are probably that it's going to. I don't think we're going to be allowed to open until probably June. That's my initial gut feeling on it. It could be different, but um, I'm, I'm thinking we probably won't be able to open until June. Boo! <laughs> I know, right? I mean, we'll see. I mean, if we can open, you know, as a business, if I can open, um, you know, then I'll, I'll do the classes via, you know, do a small group of classes each day. And then we'll record them all still on, on Zoom. Um, I'm in the process of getting some better equipment, uh, microphone equipment, because I've noticed um, a number of the videos that we've posted and everything, the, the audio quality is not good. The video seems to be OK. The audio quality is the challenge right now. Um, I've tried a couple of things. I've tried using a lapel mic. Um, and it's because my uniform moves around and so forth, it starts to kind of mute out the sound, the background sound. And then, so it's hard to hear me talk at certain times and at other times you can actually hear. Um, so it's fading in and out. Um, I've tried, I've tried a couple of different options and so forth to kind of see, um, but I'm going to invest in a, in a headset that was recommended by a videographer waiting for it to get shipped um hopefully that will work um it's supposed to at least um keep the audio quality uh pretty consistent so um because of the fact that we do uh, I, I do a lot of moving around and so forth it would be good to have that available so so we'll see we'll see how that works um but as you guys are watching the videos or if you're listening in if you start to hear me fade out and so forth let me know um, especially when I'm looking at the camera, because everything should be pretty consistent here. I'm using my laptop right now, obviously. I'm not using my, my phone at all. But um, when we get to the point where we're able to at least reopen partially, and I have classes at Apex, um, I'm going to still do the Zoom during that time. It just won't be in like this mode where you can kind of see me in front and, and so forth. Um, the camera will be kind of situated on the side. 
or we'll have to turn the classes since the classes are going to be small enough we might turn it so that everyone can kind of still see the same way that you guys are seeing inside my basement here so just keep that in mind did everyone get a copy of the obviously most of you guys have a copy of the curriculum and everything but everyone should have gotten an electronic copy as well so um, start looking at that, start studying that. Uh, I want you guys to really be um, comfortable and confident with that material, and we'll see what happens. So, all right, I'll give it another minute and then we'll kind of get started. We'll start with um, kicking technique, and then we'll, we'll finish up with stances um, as, as our agenda for today. So, you can certainly Practice along if you want to in your rooms, wherever you're at, or you can choose to just kind of sit, listen, take notes, whatever you need to do. So I'll leave it up to you guys. I kind of went ahead and put all my uniform on and everything just so it's easier for you guys to see because I don't, obviously, with a brownish colored carpet, my feet kind of get lost in the, in, in it a little bit. So um, I haven't really found a way to be able to accent my feet so that you guys can see. So, all right. To paint them orange, sir. What was that? To paint them orange. <laughs> I can paint them orange? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Don't know how the wife would take that. So. <laughs> Thinking about your Bronco color, sir. No, right? You're just mad because I get I got a good Good Dallas Cowboy <laughs> meme on you. Oh, there's there's hundreds of those. There's hundreds of them. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> I'm used to it. It's okay. <laughs> I don't know if any of you guys are like theater buffs at all, but they did yesterday. They did Family Opera on YouTube for free. And each week, I think they're doing like a different theater uh, production. I think last week it was Jesus Christ Superstar. Uh, the week before that was Les Mis, Les Miserables. So uh, I'm a big fan of the opera fan. So it was good to kind of watch that. I think it's still on. In fact, I think you got maybe 24 hours uh, to view that. Um, it was a production that was done, I think, in London. So it, it was the 25th anniversary of the, um, the show. So um, I don't know if you guys, if you guys aren't buffs, uh, there's a little bit of history. If you go to Temple Fuel up in Denver, where they have, where they have the, the shows and everything, the Performing Arts Center, uh, Temple Fuel's first show was Phantom of the Opera when they, after they had built it. And it was specially built for Phantom of the Opera. So um, it's kind of neat. Uh, but I'm a big Andrew Lloyd Webber fan. So he also did Jesus Christ Superstar. Um, the um, Cats is another one of his. So he's got a lot of great stuff out there. So if you're if you're big into singing and um, and theatrics and so forth, um, try to find that on YouTube. So I think it's like I said, it's available for another 24 hours. I think before they'll pull it off and then they'll put something else on next week. But yeah, all right, so let's get started. All right, from a kicking standpoint, all right, basic kicks. Um, one of the biggest things um, we, we generally know, right, with the majority of our kicks, everything starts with that knee position, right? Front kick, roundhouse kick, side kick, reverse side kick, reverse spinning hook kick, hook kick, tornado kick, right? Those types of kicks, twisting kick. All are based on knee position, bringing up the knee first. So anytime that we're doing kicks, right? The only two kicks that we have really in our repertoire that don't require a knee bend are axe kick and crescent kick, okay? Even though we can bend our knee on an axe kick, and occasionally we will bend our knee at the tail end of a crescent kick, like in take a um, cheer chong where we do the crescent kick motion, you'll see a lot of people bend their knee. And that's okay for that. Um, typically, all of the kicks will start with some sort of a knee lift. Okay, so the knee is the very, um, very important in, in our base, in our foundation when we kick. 
So a lot of times when we bring that knee up, depending on what we're doing, right, especially like with those front side kicks, front kicks especially, we want to bring that knee up. What a lot of people tend to do, hold on here, someone else is coming into the meeting. All right, so what happens a lot of times, what ends up happening is that when they pick their knee up, a lot of times you'll notice that their foot turns. Okay, let me get a little bit closer to the camera, but their foot turns a little bit like this or like this. Okay, so it's important to make sure that, like, especially on the front kick, right? We want that knee to come straight up and down. We want this to be in a straight vertical line. Okay, we don't want it to be turned a lot of times. So, a lot of times when we're kicking, people will do this, and you can kind of see how my knee is not in line with my, my ankle bone. Okay. So when we do that, right, if we do that, then we, we alter kind of the, the trajectory of the kick. So you'll see sometimes people, their front kick kind of comes up like this a little bit to the side or comes across their body a little bit. It should come straight, straight up and down, right, with this motion, right? So you want to make sure that they're moving straight up and down their body line. So from that fighting stance position, when they come up, it comes straight up that line. We don't want that heel to turn inward or outward, okay? The other thing that's most important with that front kick is the, the tippy toe position, the ball of the foot, okay? We want this, okay? I hope that you guys see my foot pretty good here. We want this position here, right? Which is just like wearing heels, okay? You'll see a lot of kids do this, right? The reason why we don't want this Okay. Um, Natalie, can you grab that board for me? Okay, so I'm gonna hold for a second. Right? So when we're kicking, when especially board breaking, right? Senior green belts have to do front kick for board break. All right. When they're kicking, we hold it at an angle like this, right? So that we can hit with the ball of our foot. We don't really want the heel to hit. Okay. The reason why we don't want the heel to hit is because when we're foot position is like this, what happens a lot of times is the pressure on the toes pulls back towards your knee. Okay. On a whiteboard, it's not going to do that, of course. Right. But for a little kid that's kicking a whiteboard, right. It gets, there's a pressure that pulls here. And what happens is that when it pulls this way, guess what's getting pulled. Okay right underneath here called the Achilles tendon, right? You're pulling on that Achilles tendon when you hit a front kick in this manner here because the pressure of that board pushes back on those toes, right? So in order to protect your Achilles tendon, you have to straighten out that ankle, okay? So instead of kicking like this, you have to point the ankle forward like you're tippy toeing. Okay, that's very important on board breaking and the foundation of that front kick. That because when you start to kick with your toes, because we're making contact with the ball of the foot, if your foot's like this and you're making contact with the ball of the foot, it's just going to pull back toward, towards you. And what you're doing now is you're tearing the tendon. You're, tear, you're putting little tears. As you feel pulling, it's tearing the tendon fibers a little bit. And over the course of time, when that happens, guess what? It snaps. Okay? And when your Achilles tendon snaps, all right, you get a ball. You get a ball. This calf muscle here goes right into the back of your knee, like a big round ball. And then you get a little round ball down here underneath your foot. All right? And the recovery from that injury is 12 months minimum surgery. You have to sew it back together. You have to stretch it back out and connect it. It's a very painful injury. I've seen it happen. Yeah, I've seen big guys. I've seen 260-pound guys fighting, right, bouncing around and then pop, falling down to the ground and screaming in pain, right? And it's because... As we get older, we have to stretch that Achilles tendon out a little bit more. You younger people, right? It's okay. You younger people, you can just go in and you can start doing stuff. 
the older we get, we have to take care of that Achilles. You, you have to start stretching that out and protecting it, right? You have to loosen it up, warm it up. So you want to make sure that's the thing about that front kick. We want to protect that Achilles tendon. So you want to, when you're working with students and you're teaching them, you want to make sure that they're kicking with the ball of their foot. Okay? So those two, two items that you want to pay attention to, knee comes up straight, okay? And then the kicking with the ball of the foot. So pointing the toes forward and pulling the toes, or pushing the, uh, the ankle forward, pulling the toes back. All right? So front kick. Axe kick come up the exact same way, right? The only difference with the axe kick, obviously, is we keep the leg straight, right? And I would suggest, too, the same thing. You don't necessarily want to pull your toes back when you do axe kick, because once again, now you're exposing, when you come down, you're using the back of the heel, right? You end up trying to hit with the back end of the heel, right? Which is not really what we want. That's not really ideal. For axe kick, it's better to hit with more of the bottom of the heel, the part that you stand on. So when you come down, right, kind of point the toes down and get the that flat part of the heel that you're standing on to hit that board. Right? So if this is my heel, this is my heel that I stand on, I'm going to hit this way instead of hitting it on the back side of my heel. Okay? Once again, we're trying to protect long-term, you know, and I'm looking long-term, right? You do a few axe kicks and you break with this part of your foot, it's not gonna do anything right now, right? But guess what? If you're in, if you're in it for the long haul like me, right? You have 36 years in, right? You hit that board 36 years doing axe kick, you're gonna damage it if you're not doing it right, right? So my the goal for me is that when I teach you this stuff and you start to work with other people is to protect them from long-term injury. Okay. So everything that we do, right. We come straight up, straight down. Want them to kind of flatten out their foot. Like they're trying to slap down with their toes. Right. And then they'll hit with that bottom of that, that heel coming down on the board. All right. You also have, right. When they're doing that, Instead of coming straight up, sometimes they can come sideways a little bit and come straight down on the board. So a little bit here and come down, that's okay, right? Or from a distance standpoint, right? Don't have them stand too close because here, if they come straight up, straight down, ow, right? They hit that bottom of that board. So have them step back, but then when they come up and then they have to lean forward, that's the thing, right? If you've got someone that's limber, that has good flexibility, good extensibility in their, in their legs, like, uh, like Dayson and, and Julia and, and Natalie, then yeah, they can, they can certainly come up around to the side and down. That's not a problem because they can control their leg pretty well, right? But a lot of times, especially for kids, right, they're, they're still learning how to control their body. So the easiest thing to do is to try to get them to come straight up and then lean forward and finish down this way toward the board, okay? So they want to be far back enough where they can go straight up, one, and then lean into that board and then come down, okay? And once again, a vertical, vertical motion, all right? Now with roundhouse kick. Roundhouse kick is the first kick that we pivot. So you want to make sure we want to treat roundhouse kick like front kick from a knee position standpoint. Okay, so front kick, when I come straight up, my knee looks like this, okay, right? I came straight up like this. Okay, and when I do roundhouse kick, I wanna do the same thing. The only difference is I'm gonna pivot and I want my knee sideways now, okay? Right, once again, this is from a teaching standpoint, from a teaching standpoint. So we want our knee this way so that we throw just like we did front kick straight like this, we want to throw roundhouse kick the exact same way, right? But with our knee pointed to the side, all right? So the way this works is I teach bringing the knee around, right? You have an object, right? I want to come over the object and around. 
right? I don't want to come straight up because if I come straight up, I'm going to hit the object. I want to bring my knee up and around. This is the motion of that roundhouse kick that I want to see. It's hard for people to do though. It's because you have to have good hip flexors. You got to be able to hold this up and move your hip around. For a lot of people, this, this motion here, it may seem easy, but for a lot of people, this is not easy to just lift that knee up. So that's why a lot of times you get swinging kicks where they don't really pick up their knee. They're just already snapping out and then kind of lifting the leg at the end. So we want to make sure when we bring that knee up, our body turns, our shoulder comes around here, and then I'll extend out. Timing is important on this one, right? Because you're turning and kicking at the same time, right? Once again, this is traditional roundhouse kick, right? Traditional roundhouse kick. Now, from a sports standpoint, from a Pumse standpoint, a little bit different, okay? Because why? We're worried about kicking high, right? So, in order to kick face level, you got to get your knee up to face level or chest level to be able to get that kick up higher, right? So what happens a lot of times is we, we manipulate, right? So instead of directly to the side, we have it upward a little bit, okay? But the motion is still the same. I want to come up and around, right? It's just not as, it's not as drastic here like this one is, right? From here, I want to come more up and to the front this way, okay? That way, from here, if you notice, my knee is pointed upward toward my opposite shoulder. And then from there, you can extend out, okay? Now, you will find when people are doing roundhouse kicks, a couple of things to keep in mind, right? You have the students that, that don't pivot, and they just kick like this, right? And then it looks like it's turning a little bit, but they're not pivoting. Once again, longevity standpoint, long term. You kick like this a lot of times, right? Pretty soon you're gonna go, oh, Master Hong, my hips are hurting. All right, my hips are really hurting when I do roundhouse kick. Why is that? So it's important to make sure that we keep, right? Teach them to turn that foot at least 90 degrees. At least 90 degrees, okay? Second thing. Timing of the kick is important, right? If you snap too early, then the kick only finishes here, okay? So you have that student that usually kicks too early and then the kick doesn't get to the center, okay? You've got the other student that goes, oh, they, they listened to you. They said, oh, you told me to pivot, okay? So they pivot and then they kick. And you see, they go past the target, right? And that's all because of your knee position, right? So where is my knee when I start to kick? If my knee's here when I start to kick, I miss my target. If my knee is here when I start to kick, I miss my target. So the timing is important to make sure that that knee gets around to the front and then that's where you snap. So you gotta make sure that their knee gets to the front here and they should be snapping when the knee gets here. Not here and then kick, right? It's gotta to work together. The pivot, turn, and snap have to work together. If it works too early, then it looks like that. If it works too late, it goes past the target. Okay, you guys understand? Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Side kick, or actually crescent kick real quick, crescent kick. Crescent kick, I, I, I like to teach it. Think about here if I'm in a chumi position, okay? If I'm in a chumi position, I kind of imagine a line along my right or my left shoulder here, okay? So if my left leg is back, I want to kick right here. I don't want to kick here like an ax kick straight in front. I want to kick just a little earlier, okay? I'm gonna do my ax kick here. All right, what you'll see a lot of times is people want to make this big circle motion. They want to swing really big like this. So what happens is from a side view, they're already starting to lift way over here. One, and then they're trying to come all the way around. Okay? 
This is just like you take a chair chunk, right? You take a chair chunk, you want to do the exact same thing with this, this crescent kick motion. You want to bring it up like an ax kick just here and then come across in a small motion this way, okay? What this does is it helps minimize the amount of friction that you have to do, that you have to pivot with to get through the target, okay? So you keep it small and you come across this way. And then basically, yeah, you allow that bottom foot to turn. That's the key. We want the bottom foot to turn. You'll find students that, hey, they're so worried about trying to land it in front that they don't pivot. And then they, you know, they, they fight this, fight with the base leg here. They fight here to try to get to this point here. I want the kids and I want the students to, when they kick, boom, they want to come finish here and then step into that technique. I want to see the rotation. Once again, I'm trying to protect, right? Just because you can doesn't mean you should, right? Just because I can do it this way without a pivot doesn't mean I should. It may be okay right now, right? But two, you know, two months down, down the road, you start doing this and you go, my hip's starting to hurt when I do that kick. Right? That's your body telling you you're doing that wrong, okay? That crescent kick, right? Keep that knee straight, okay? And then just swing across. Keeping the toes up, okay? Keeping the toes up and pulling across our body, all right? Once again, we want this kick to be face height. We want this kick to, kick to be face height, just like axe kick. We want axe kick to be face height, all right? All the other kicks that we do, we want those kicks to be minimum belt height, waist height. If you can kick higher, great. If you can't, that's okay too. But generally speaking, we want everyone to at least kick midsection level, okay? So for those that are really limber, right, who practice uh, punces a lot or whatever, right, competition team, yes, we're gonna force you to kick higher, okay? But generally speaking, everything should be right at the waist level, all right? Just done with correct technique. All right, so now side kick. Right? Side kick. Side kick is a linear kick. It's a linear kick. It moves front to back. All right? So we want to make sure that we try to keep this front to back motion as, as short as possible. Right? The shortest distance between two points is a straight line. The shorter we make that straight line, the faster our technique is going to be. Okay? So what happens a lot of times, because we tell the, the students, hey, you have to pivot on a side kick, right? So when they do that, they bring their knee up like they do every other kick with the knee up in front, and then they turn, okay? So now it becomes a circular kick, if you notice, right? Because they went up like this, and then they pivoted, you see? So my knee came up and around, and I treated it like a circular kick, okay? This is a linear kick. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull our knee straight across and then forward, okay? So what I'm doing is when I teach this, first thing you're going to do is I'm going to try to get my knee to this side, my left knee over to my right side as fast as I can, okay? The fastest way to do that is to create a small, a short line here, okay? So I'm going here, okay? So what it is from a side view is when I come up, right? I'm not coming around, I'm coming straight, okay? The problem here though is what you'll see is a lot of times they'll do this and then they do this. So they lift here, but then when they get ready to kick, they pull back and then they do this, okay? Once again, it's not an effective technique. It's not an efficient technique, right? If I go here like this, the time it takes me to do this, now I lose my balance, right? Because what should be happening at this point here? Once I'm here, what should I be doing, right? I should be moving toward my target. That's where the pivot occurs here, right? That pivot from 90 degrees to 180. And you see what happened here when I did that. Okay, my knee just tilts. My heel comes forward. That's the sign that tells you, okay, now I start pushing. Okay? 
So from here, from our front view, I'm here, but I'm 90 degrees. Okay? Then pop. Now my heel's towards you. That way I can extend out. Okay? But once again, this is all slow motion. This is one, two. Eventually, we have to be able to get it to one smooth motion, right? That's the goal, right? Where you're not stopping here and then pivoting and finishing, right? We're not doing the, the robot and trying to show every movement, right? It should be fluid, right? So I should be able to lift and keep snapping out and pushing out all the way. Now, what, here's a couple of things that happen. First thing that usually happens, these are usually for the people that are really tight, really stiff, right? Don't have a good, that they don't, they're not really flexible. When they kick, they kick like this. They don't extend out. They don't push that leg all the way out, okay? So it's important, we want them to fully extend that kick. This is training those senior blue belts, red belts that have to do side kick and reverse side kick breaks, right? If you kick and you're always pulling back right away, right? You're not getting the full extension of the kick. You're minimizing the power. You, you're losing all your power because you're trying to pull it back, all right? The second thing that you have to pay attention to is this, when they lift, Okay? A lot of times people lift and they keep their heel back. Okay? They keep their heel back like this, like a front kick. Right? If I do front kick, this is it. That's what I want when I lift my knee. I lift my knee and then I come out. I don't want to do this with a side kick. Right? Because if I pivot now here, you see my kick? That's what we call a mule kick or a donkey kick. That's used for sparring. Right? That's, a, that's, a, that's what we call a back kick. Right? Because your heel's down and you're coming up. Okay? That's a sparring technique. All right? Mr. Daniel, you have a question? No, sir. No? Okay. Just checking. All right. So, right? So, if people lift like this, then what happens when they pivot? Right? It looks like that. That's what the side kick looks like. From a side view, it looks like this. And you notice how my leg goes up like this. It kind of swings up. Once again, there's no power in that technique. Right? What we want is a, we want to push into the target. We want from here, push and thrust into that target. Okay? We want to make sure that your heel, your knee, your hip, and your shoulder are on the straight line here. So here, if you're leaning forward, right? This is what my kids do a lot. Okay, even Natalie, right, who's got this vertical sidekick, well, almost vertical, right? What happens is that she leans like this, and then she kicks like this. So it looks like a good sidekick, but here, I'm out of position because my upper body, my shoulder is forward. I want to be here, right? I want everything to be in a straight line. I want to look over my shoulder, not in front of my shoulder. I don't want to look like this. I want to look like this at my target, okay? So remember like when we practice at, at school, right? The very beginning, warm-ups here, right? Are you just nodding your head like this? Like you don't like me, right? Because if you're only doing that, then you're not, you're not stretching, right? That's why you go here and try to get that neck all the way here, right? I want you to be an owl, right? This is the owl exercise, right? Keeping this straight and then turning the head as much as you can. That trains you for this here. That way you know here instead of this, right? So if you have a hard time going to the shoulder, then guess what? You're gonna always do your side kick wrong because you're always gonna turn your shoulder so that you can keep your head this way, right? You gotta be able to turn your head all the way like this. Side kick reverse side kick, same thing. Okay. All right. Um, the other thing with side kick, right? If you notice when I lift my leg up, okay, I'm coming closer to the screen. Here, my toes are my toes are up. Okay. 
A lot of times when people lift, they lift and their, their toes are pointed down or they're, you know, they're just kind of loose, right? Noodle foot. Okay? I want them to concentrate on lifting the toes up. All right? Opposite of front kick. Front kick, we want to push the, toe, push the ankle down, right? Side kick, we want to lift the toes up because then that sets our foot up in the right pro proper position, okay? Because we want to make sure that we're hitting with the heel and the blade of the foot, not the toes, okay? So if I'm lifting with my toes pointed down, when I kick, it's going to be the same thing, right? Muscle memory. A lot of times people have a hard time doing this. So when you're working with them and you see them having a hard time, you see that their toes are coming forward, then what you're going to do is you're going to have them practice kicking low. Okay? So, and you do this by having them kick off the front leg here and then just practice pushing down. Boom. And keeping the toes up, right? Almost like they're, like they're standing on something, right? So like here, right? This is the way I, when I lift my knee and my foot, I want it flat on another surface up here. Okay, that's what I'm trying to mimic. It's like I'm standing on this here. Okay? I don't want my toes to be touching it and my heel up. I want my whole flat foot on there. So that's the, the visualization. We want to see this, not the toes down. Okay? That's for side kick and reverse side kick. One quick note on reverse side kick. When we train this, especially for first timers that have never done this before, we're in our fighting stance, right? What I want you to do is I want you to make sure that they're pivoting that front foot all the way, okay? I want them to initially start by turning that front foot all the way so that that heel is facing their target, okay? As they pivot, I want them to slide their back leg over to the side so they're like almost in a front stand position facing the back, okay? All right, so from, a, from this position here, all right, when I get ready, right, when I get ready to kick towards you guys, right, what I'm doing here, I'm going to turn and look, you see, and what I'm doing is I'm going to slide my leg over, so that I'm in the front stance position, right, and then from here, then they can lift and then push forward, okay, so those are the things that I want you guys to kind of uh, focus on uh, when it comes to side kick and reverse side kick, all right, Hook kick and reverse spinning hook kick are just modifications of those side kicks. The only difference here is, once again, remember how we talked about like with crescent kick and axe kick. Mm -hmm. Axe kick is straight in front. Crescent kick is just a little bit early. Talking the hook kick is the same thing. Mm -hmm. kick, hooking and side kick. So instead of kicking straight out in front with hook kick, I'm going to kick past my target. I want to aim for... If my right leg is kicking, I want to aim for the left side of my body here, okay? Then you move the entire leg and then you hook. So when your leg gets to this point here in front, that's when you start the knee bend, okay? So your leg is straight here. As you pull, it's straight. And then when you get to the front, you bend and hook. Same do a reverse spinning hook kick. You throw the reverse side kick early, Right, I turn, I throw my reverse side kick here. Same thing, I pull and then I hit hook. So the key here is to make sure that the leg is straight and then you bend, okay? Leg is straight and pull and then you bend for the hook. When you're hooking, all you're doing is pulling the heel, right, butt kicker. Pulling the heel into your butt. That's all we're doing, okay? And what that does is it allows it allows um, basically a, a slapping motion, right? It's like when you're blocking and you snap that wrist at the very end. It's the same thing. It creates that impact, that point of impact, right? It's like a hammer hitting the nail in the head, right? You tap, 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 and the nail gradually goes in when you're just tapping, right? But when you bring it with some force, with some speed, right, the nail goes in further and quicker, right? And that's the same thing when we do that reverse spinning hook, is if we're just doing this, we're just tapping, right? Right? We're just tapping. 
That's okay to start, but eventually it should be thrust and pull across, right? Working together, making sure, once again, if the kick starts off like a specific kick, all the characteristics of that specific kick should be modeled, right? So when we do um, hook kick, it's that hook kick position, since it starts off like a side kick, everything that we do as a side kick should start off the same way. So I should get that full pivot when I'm out here, when I'm out here, right? Then I pull and hook. All right, does that make sense? All right. Um, any questions right now? No questions? Yes. Yes. Um, so I noticed that when a lot of students, when they're doing their hook kick, they tend to lose their balance a lot. And I think it's because when they're throwing, I think they're focusing too much on like doing that side. And then when they hook their foot around, like I don't think that they're getting that they have to kick their butt versus. I don't know. Okay. Do you? I don't know. Yeah, I know what you're saying, right? So what happens a lot of times, part of this is, right, not everybody is as member as an athlete, right? Who can kind of just stay in place and be able to throw this kick at face level, okay? Right, so what happens? Right, we're telling them, oh, this is a face level kick. So what do we do? How do we kick higher? How do most people kick higher? They lean. I want to kick high with roundhouse kick, right? I want to kick right here. If I stay in place, I, this is about as high as I can kick, right? So in order for me to get that high kick, I do that. And see, now I lose my balance, right? So in order to alleviate that, right, you have to train the technique first before we focus in on kicking high, right? Get the technique right. So. You teach them to kick low, right? Low and slow. Anytime you're teaching anything, low and slow, right? Front kick, low and slow. Axe kick. That's what we do. We, we start and get the foundation down. We get the technique down properly. Then we gradually push them to kick a little bit higher, okay? Remember, three phases of learning. Learn the movements, all the details, and then speed and power. From a kicking standpoint, right? The movement is picking up my knee, pivoting. Those are all the movements, right? All the details, right, are like the timing of it, right? Knowing when to snap, knowing when to hook, knowing when to thrust, right? That kind of stuff. Even the, the foot positioning, that's all detail work. Okay, once they get, okay, that's a front kick motion, right? Then the speed and power phase is, okay, can I, can I hit my target? Can I get my leg to the target that I need to hit? Can I hit base level with reverse spinning hook kick properly, right? Or does my kick still look like this, right? Or like this, right? Okay. So that's how we, you know, that's how I want you to approach it when you guys are working with the students, right? So even if you've got someone that's really good that, that already knows it, right? Can they, can their technique improve? Can you fix or make it better, right? Chances are yes, right? Everyone has flaws. Everyone has a side that they're not as good with, right? Most of us are one leg, one leg feels really good. The other leg feels like crap. All right, so we have to work on that crappy leg side. All right, work on that crappy leg side. All right, so we've got about 20 more minutes, so I want to kind of shift gears and I want to move to stances real quick. All right, so stances are our foundation, right, ladies and gentlemen, foundation. It's the way we stand. This is what builds our, our, our Taekwondo technique, right? If we don't have good stances, then chances are we're going to struggle. All right, we're going to struggle in our, in our progression, all right? White belt, yellow belt, senior yellow belt, green belt, maybe even senior green belt. Yeah, it's okay. You can probably skate by without the greatest of stances. Once you start getting to that blue belt level, that red belt level, that especially the black belt level, right? The expectation is that you know everything, right? 
whether you do or not, yeah, you guys are instructors, right? So yes, the, it's not just an, it's just not a perception. It's an expectation that you know everything, right? But a lot of times, right? The assumption is that all black belts, all red belts can know all their stances. And yet we're still making mistakes, right? So, right? Um, I'm going to send you guys a copy of a handout that has um, diagrams with feet on them to kind of show the different stances that we, that we work on. The, um, this is just the WTF stances, right? The cookie one stances, the ones that we train primarily with. This is not um, the ITF stuff. I will teach you guys ITF the deeper, more where I grew up from, but that, um, those stances are slightly different, okay? So everything that we're going over is more uh, WT, cookie one oriented stances, right? And the, the standard that they're looking for, all right? So, First one is narangi sogi, narangi sogi, which is your uh, your chumi stance, right? Or your ready stance. Narangi sogi is what they call parallel stance. Okay, so your parallel stance, right? Feet straight ahead. So your feet should basically look like they're standing on two railroad tracks, right? Toes should be same line, side to side. Heels should be same line, side to side, unless you have two different size feet. All right. Okay. The other thing you want to make sure that they're parallel with one another, right? There should be no turns, no inversions at all. Okay. You'll see a lot of people, right? Jumbe, and they're like this, and the feet are ducked out, or one leg is in front of the other, or one hip is turned out. Right? This is what they call the sass, the sass stance. Right? So you want to make sure that you're balanced, right? Both feet are balanced on that chumbi stance. The the, the hand span or the foot span in between the feet should be one foot length in between the feet. So it should be approximately shoulder width to just inside your shoulder width. That's how wide our jubi stance or our narangi sogi should be. Okay? That parallel stance. So that's where we want about this much space. Okay? If it's wider than that, we got to bring them in. Okay? Right? Juchumsugi is a horse riding stance. The horse riding stance is going to be two foot lengths deep. So now it's just outside of your shoulder widths. Okay? You'll see a lot of people go really deep. And the deeper they go, the knees start to go straight. Okay? Once again, on that horse riding stance, right? Once again, it's same as the narangi sogi, right? We want this to be straight across. Everything should be in line and two parallel lines up and down, just a little bit wider than your shoulders. Okay, that's your horse riding stance. And that way here, when it's just wider than your shoulders, yes, it's easy to bend our knees and stay there. Okay, once again, the deeper we get, the, more it, the harder it is to bend your knees, and so people straighten out their knees. And that's why we don't make that stance that deep. Okay, so it's a shorter stance, shorter version. Okay, right? You have the close stance, right? Moasogi, moasogi, close stance. Right? Your close stance, your feet are together, right? This is the tension or A stance in take a chair jump. Right? So when you're in your close stance, once again, it's just like your your chubby stance, right? Toes and everything are in line, right? Everything should be touching here. Okay? Toes should be touching, heels should be touching. Right? Now some people have like knobby knees, right? Their knees are kind of big, and so maybe the knees are touching. Right, and they have a hard time being able to get the toes and the heels to touch, right? But they should be very close to touching, right? That's the ideal position to get them to touch, okay? But we know sometimes anatomically, we're not all built the same, so it might be difficult for some, but we want to get them as close to touching as possible. Once again, feet and everything and heels are on the same line, side to side, parallel, okay? All right, so. Walking stance, front stance, both same foot position, okay? One of the tricks that I like to teach you guys is everything is based off of your jumbi stance with the exception of your, your moasogi, your close stance, and your bonsogi, your tiger stance, okay? Everything else is based off of how, how far apart we stand in our jumbi position, okay? So everything that we measure in the side-to-side -side width, okay, 
is going to be based off of the ball of the foot. Okay? So when we're measuring side to side, the ball of the foot that's in the front to the ball of the foot that's in the back, that's the width. Okay, so that width should always be one foot length in between for walking stance, back stance, front stance, right? Okay, so apsogi, right? Apsogi, walking stance. Okay, walking stance is three foot lengths deep. So three foot lengths forward to back. So this, the, the feet that you're standing around, this is, the, this is foot one. Then you've got an imaginary foot two, and then a third foot three. That's how deep your walking stance is, all right? So two, three, okay? That's how wide our walking stance is. It's a normal, normal stride. When you walk normally, it's approximately three foot lengths, three total foot lengths, or an imaginary foot length in between, okay? None of us are tightrope walkers or geishas, where we walk like this, real small, or penguins, right? So, right, our normal stride is, boom, right? Should be about three foot lengths, okay? Now, once again, the spacing, you have to be shoulder width, right? Or just inside your shoulder width. The other thing that we do is that back foot pivots about 30 degrees. So that heel turns inward towards your towards your other leg, about 30 degrees, okay? And what that does is it shifts your hips too. It just shifts your hips and your shoulder. So when people are doing walking stance, right? If I'm using my, my left leg here forward, I want my left shoulder and my left hip to be in front of my body, okay? I don't want it to be like this, where you guys are only seeing just my, my good side. Right? Only the good side of my body. Right? I want you to see the, the better side here. So now you see both. Okay? Because it's just a natural position of my hips. Here, I'm, I'm forcing it. So what happens a lot of times is when they're standing and they square off their shoulders like this, right? They're doing, they're doing something wrong. Right? Usually it's because from here they're too wide. And so they can do this. So why did you go? Yes, you can do this, right? You can be straight side to side if you go wide. If you maintain this stance here and you try to do this, you're gonna feel a little, you're gonna feel unbalanced, right? You're gonna almost feel like that back knee wants to turn in or do something if you stand straight like this. So what we wanna do is we want the upper body to mimic what the lower body is doing. Okay, so everything should kind of tilt a little bit, whichever leg's in front. Okay, so that's walking stance, right? Apsogi, right? Front stance, apkubi, apkubi, right? Now, from the walking stance position, we just bring that front foot forward one more. So it's four foot lengths, four to, four to five foot lengths deep, right? Depending on the, the size of your, the student, right? You have someone like Mr. Hammer, you know, who's like, you know, 6'10 or whatever. Now he's got all legs. If he only goes four foot lengths, right, his stance is going to look like this. Right, his front stance is going to look like this. It's going to look very awkward. Okay? So we're looking at about four to five foot lengths. Okay? Angles are the same. 30 degree angle on that back foot, front foot, four steps forward, front knee bent. Okay? Now, this is what everyone does that they don't pay attention to, okay? Even Natalie, right? What happens here is when they go into front stance, they concentrate on that front leg, they forget about the back leg. Jason, are you listening? All right, this is all about you, man. All right, you and Natalie, right? From here, when they do this, right, what happens is that you can kind of tell that my knee seems a little bent. Right? Because I'm concentrating on my front knee band, but I kind of forgot about my back leg. Okay? So what I need to do here is I need to push my back heel down. And as you see that, now my leg straightens out a little bit more. Okay? Right? So what this does is 
if you think about it, it gives us a better base. We're more balanced here. If we just concentrate on that front leg, we're not really balanced because this back foot is really loose, right? If we want to be able to be strong in whatever we're doing, if we're blocking, if we're punching, whatever we're doing in this front stance position, if we push that heel down, now we've, we've put that base down so that our feet aren't going to move, right? It gives us a stronger ability to, to execute a good block or good strike, okay? Right, so make sure that that back heel is pushed down into the ground. Front knee bent. Now the other thing with the front knee, okay? We want to make sure, okay, that the knee straight up and down from that front heel. We don't want the knee to be in front of the heel. We don't want the front knee to be behind the heel. We want it to be straight up and down. Okay? Straight up and down. Front foot, whichever foot is in front should always be straight ahead as well. Okay? Now, back stance. Once again, remember I told you, the width is based off of your jumi stance. Okay? So from here, all you do here is, whichever leg is in front, that's going to take two steps forward, right? To make our three, three foot lengths. So we got one right now, step forward two, step forward three, okay? Walking stance position, right? Now the only dis difference here is we bring that, instead of 30 degrees, we pivot to 90 degrees. So now, if you notice, my heels should look like this, right? My heels should look like this. They're not on the same line. They're actually right adjacent to one another, okay? Based off of my jumi position. Okay, so here, if I turn my foot, see, they're not, they're not on the same line. From here, all I do is turn this 90 degrees, I bring this forward, three steps, okay? So your feet are in the shape of the letter L, right? It looks like this, heels are on the same line, they're across like this, right? Front foot is straight. Now, the other thing from here, I'm gonna give you a side view. So once I'm here, like this, right? Both knees bend. Okay, and then what happens is because this is a back stance, meaning the majority of our weight is on our back leg, we have to shift our hip to the back. Okay, so as, as you guys can kind of see me, what you guys hopefully will see is that my shoulder, my hip, my knee, and my foot should almost be in a straight line here, vertical line. Okay, so it's not this here. All right, it's this here. So you notice that my back knee bends a little bit more than my front knee, but both knees are bent. Okay, so from a back stance position, we're talking about more weight on the back leg. So both knees are going to be bent, right? And then I'm going to just shift. I'm pushing my hips toward my back leg. Okay, don't let that knee collapse inward or collapse outward. Okay, it should be directly to the side. All right, so if I'm facing you guys, my knee is pointed directly to the side here. Okay, all right, so um, now you also have um, a modification of that, right? Left stance and right stance. So your left and right stance used to be called T stance, right? Is now left and right stance. So Basically, same thing. From here, it's just like your back stance position, but instead of three foot legs deep, it's two. Okay? So left and right stance. It's a left stance if left leg is in front. If I'm looking to my left and my left leg is in front, it's a left stance. Right? It's a right stance if my right leg is in front. Once again, two foot legs deep, right? But standing straight up. Okay? You have this in Ojang, right? Downward hammer fist movement, Ojang. That's your left and right stance. Okay? Right? In addition to that, in Ojang, you also have back cross stance. Right? You have the back cross stance. Right? Hi, Miss Hyatt. Right? From here, when we do the back cross stance, right? It's typically 
front foot, and then back foot. What I want you to think about with the back cross dance, right? This happens in Tegu Gojang at the very end, right? When you do this, your right foot is going to step out at about a 45 degree angle. Your left foot is going to come behind it. And what we want is our, our feet, right? Our toes to be in the same line, side to side, okay? All right, from here. So what happens here is, if you can kind of see the lower part of my leg, right? My calves are actually touching here, right? They're making an X, a cross dance, right? Okay? So they're making an X. This is your X dance. Okay? So what I'm doing is I've got an angle on that front, and then the back foot comes up this way, and they're crossing. Okay? So that's the back cross dance, meaning the front foot steps out, and then the back foot comes in. Okay? The other one is what we call a forward cross dance or a front cross dance, like in choreo. Okay? When you guys do this part here, this is a front cross dance. So what's happening here is when you step in front and you cross, it's the same thing. The only difference is, is that the leg you're stepping with goes flat and then the leg that you're standing on comes up on the toes. Okay? The angle here though is straight. When I cross in front, I'm straight still. Like I'm in a juvie position or something, my toes are pointing straight to, to the side here. So it's one, and then I just lift my back heel up. And then from here, I, that's where I throw my side kick into this upset spear thrust strike. Okay? We have back cross dance and front cross dance. All right? So um, in Oja, or Chirchan, once again, we had the close dance, the Muasogi. All right? Right, tiger stance and take a church on, right? This will be it for today. So tiger stance. Remember I told you at the very beginning, tiger stance and close stance are the ones that don't follow the, the chumbi stance with. Okay? What I want you to think about with tiger stance is, right, you're in your close stance position. Feet are side by side. Okay? You're going to bring one foot in front of the other. So... Right, bring the bring your right foot in front of the left, okay? And then from here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna bend both knees forward, okay? All right, you're gonna lift that front heel up, all right? And you're gonna open up the right or your left leg up just a little bit, about 20 to 30 degrees open on that back leg, okay? Here, and then you're kind of Bending down, knees bent, both knees are bent, and then heel, heel up. Now, when we pick the heel up, right, it's not like wearing high heels, high stiletto heels, or anything like that, right? It's just basically, right, just up enough where you feel like all the weight is on your back leg, right? So all that weight is on that back leg, right? The other thing here is, I have to bend both knees. I told you guys, you got to bend both knees, right? You want to sit down, okay? So what happens, right? Okay. Here, right, my butt sticks out, right? Here. Okay, so I'm kind of sitting down, right? Showing you the contour of my, my, not my, my nice butt, right? Right? That's what I'm doing, right? Boom. Okay, right? This is like, right? Most of you guys know Michael Jordan. Or excuse me, not Michael Jordan. Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson, right? Michael Jackson had a move where he kind of thrust and came down. Thrust and came down. That's the same thing, right? He liked to stick his butt out, right? Come here. Okay? This is what I want you to imagine, right? If Natalie and I are standing back to back like this, right? And I do my tiger stance, right? I'm, I'm using my butt to kind of butt bump her back away from me, right? So when I'm going into my tiger stance, I'm sitting down and pushing my butt out, okay? Now, this is what happens a lot of times. When I, when I push my butt out, people do this, especially little kids. Like, oh, I gotta push my butt out, and they do this. They over-exaggerate it, right? 
So what happens a lot of times, I either see this for Tiger Sands, right? Or I see this for Tiger Sands, okay? So it should be standing straight up here, right? One, this motion here, one, two, okay? Where all your weight is on that back leg. Both knees are pointed forward. Even though the back foot is opened up to the side a little bit, both knees are pointed forward. Okay. Any questions in regards to those basic stances? Okay. So those are the ones that you're primarily going to be working with, especially when you're working in class. All right. We didn't get to any of the black belt um, stances and so forth, but we can certainly do that at a later time. But these are the ones that you guys really need to be well versed in, right? To set that foundation for everyone. All right. Okay. So, any other questions or anything for anyone? No. No. All right. Well, have a blessed weekend, you guys. I right, hope you guys are safe and not sick. All right. Let's keep our fingers crossed that the governor will say, hey, we can kind of get back to a little bit of sense of normalcy. Um, if that happens, once again, I will open up Apex, but. We're going to have to have you guys sign up for classes if you guys are going to come and join us. All right. Um, but in the interim, no matter what happens going forward, because of the fact that the, the Zoom classes have been so popular with everyone, um, we're going to continue that even when we get back to a state of normalcy, when we're back to regular size classes, we're going to do um, the Zoom classes um, regularly. So I may not do all of them, but we're going to do at least one or two classes a day regularly um when we're there so just keep that in mind so you guys might be on on the internet a lot more and then once again i'm going to keep uploading content onto the um to the youtube page our youtube page so all right so the biggest thing for for us now is if you guys have any questions send me emails or contact me send me a text give me a call let me know what you guys um have questions about okay we're going to meet again next saturday all right, at same time, 11 o'clock, um, I'll have a couple more agenda items on there. If you guys want something that you guys want talked about uh, for the group, um, then let me know ahead of time. All right, and I'll get that added to the agenda. So, all right, were you guys able to hear me okay today? It didn't seem like it was yeah, cutting almost. out. So, so, Jason? Okay, I'm gonna, I will upload this onto the, what was that? And you're facing away from the camera. That's when you, we can't hear you. Yeah, yeah. I, and I got to remember that because I'm normally used to wearing that lapel mic. But what was happening with the lapel mic was it was fading out, fading back in, fading out, fading back in because it was picking up lots of background noise with me moving. So I'm investing in a, a headset. So once that comes, then I'll be able to kind of hopefully be able to do what I'm doing. Um, and you won't lose any of the audio quality. So I'll make sure um that whenever that happens just kind of wave frantically in the thing and then i'll re-explain it looking forward so uh i appreciate i appreciate you guys um your time uh, i appreciate your patience with this this is all a new learning experience for me i'm not a big fan of being on camera and so forth so it's been um quite um eye-opening for me so uh needless to say i'm learning on as i go and and the feedback you guys can give me will certainly help so Appreciate you guys. Um, once again, stay safe and enjoy the rest of your weekend. And we'll see you guys next week sometime. All right. Okay. Bye. Thanks, you. Good job, Thank you guys. You, see you later. Bye. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Thank you. Yep. See ya.